Nephi had his Garden of Eden type experience where he's given uh, a commandment to get the oh, brass yeah, plates, but he's also at the same time commanded to not kill. And as he's told by the angel, you need, I have delivered him into your hands. He goes through this wrestle that he shares at least a part of it with us. We have some dear friends who were taught the gospel. The number one hang up for many, many, many weeks was how can God command Nephi to kill Laban mm -hmm. to get the plates? It's a tricky thing to discuss. I would have much bigger questions about Nephi if he'd just done it, right? Right. And said, yeah. ah, and now I had my opportunity. Go yeah. The fact that he takes his time, right? And or, certainly... Or if that was plan A. If that right. was plan A, that's, that's terrible, terrible. That's right? Terrible. Right. Um, it's almost like plan A and B kind of right. justified yeah. plan C. Well, and I think there's something to that too where if we look at this from Laban's point of view, he had options, right? Um, and maybe he had options to even not give it to them, but without trying to kill them where the Lord would have found another way, right? Mm -hmm. but, but he chooses and chooses again, the same way that there's 10 plagues in Egypt, not because there needed to be 10, but because Pharaoh kept hardening his heart. And I think that's the importance of really looking at the, the big picture. When I teach my students, seminary institute students, one of the things we teach them is when you're trying to acquire that spiritual knowledge that we all seek, one of the methods of one of the, the principles that we teach them on how to do that is to really examine things from an eternal perspective.